Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday morning, and this is the 7 at 7, and I'm glad that you're back. I, I, Taylor is with us today. For those who don't know, he is our youth pastor extraordinaire, and I'm glad to have his thoughts as we continue to walk through some conversations about the current series that we're doing at the church entitled Our Family Fights. And we began by visiting about the fact that God has an awesome life plan for our kids. He's got some goals and some intentions for them that are really good things. And we're going to be talking about how to get to those throughout the whole series. But this week, we're talking about the things we're fighting against. And today, we want to talk about sort of this second big idea, this idea that Satan not only comes against us, but his lies also kind of fill up the whole earth and they come at our kids. So let's listen in to Sunday's clip on this topic. Number two, we are fighting against the lies of our age. We not only have Satan's personal attacks, but we have his lies roaming all over the earth. From the beginning of creation, Satan has been the father of lies. When the, with, with the lie in the Garden of Eden, Satan led Eve and Adam to fall and all of mankind with them. He spread his lies among the Hebrew people in Egypt. He lied to the Jews in exile. His lies caused unfaithfulness among the apostles. He even had the audacity to lie to Jesus as he tempted him. Lying is Satan's primary weapon against all of us. He uses this tactic, confuse us and leave us hopeless and feeling helpless. He twists God's word and seeks to distort reality. He lies to get us to doubt ourselves and even the goodness and the faithfulness of God. And he does the same in the life of your kids. All right. So there you go. I, yeah. Satan is the father of lies and the fact that there's a lot of lies that are, we could probably come up with a hundred sure. lies that a lot of teenagers and kids here that will mess up their, mess up their lives. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One of those that's on my list is what I sometimes call like the Disney lie. Sure. Right. The one that we've been telling our kids forever, and that is that they should follow their heart. Follow your heart. I love that you called Satan the father, father of lies. That's what the Bible says about him. Uh, and you're so right. Follow your heart. And this is one that's kind of bled out into culture and we hear all the time. Really, it's just saying do whatever makes you happy. Uh, pursue your own passions and pleasures. And I think there's a verse that people get wrong a lot uh, that says God will give us the desires of our heart. Well, that doesn't mean literally anything that we want. Oh. It's when we have godly desires and they line up with his. In fact, in Jeremiah, we see that the human heart is most deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Uh, ask this rhetorical question, who really knows how bad it is? Uh, so no, we shouldn't follow our hearts because they will always uh, deceive us. Uh, follow your heart, certainly a lie from the enemy. Yeah, and I, my heart doesn't know necessarily what's the right thing for me to do. It doesn't sure. know what's going to happen tomorrow. Sometimes I follow my heart and it just ends in disaster. Yeah. So follow your heart it does not seem like it's great advice and it's certainly not true. Uh, sure. The second thing you hear a lot of people say is this, reality is what you make it. Mm. Which sounds like really deep, yeah, doesn't smart. it? Right, sounds really smart. But it's kind of crazy, mm -hmm. right? Like, I, 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 as much as I might want to be a squirrel, I can't change the world to make that true. Like, I got human DNA inside of me. I'm going to be a human being. I'm not ever going to be a squirrel, yeah. no matter how much I want to make that my reality, yeah. right? And the same thing about truth. People say, you know, you got to follow your own truth. But if I believe something that's wrong, it doesn't make it right just because I believe it a lot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so this is like a second one. Reality is what you make it. But that doesn't seem like that's true at all. And our kids need to know, like the Bible would say that, well, Jesus said, right, I'm the way, the truth and the life. Right. right? As if there's one truth about a lot of things that really matter. Right. And our kids get all messed up if they keep believing they can make reality whatever they want. Yeah, to there be, is right? such a thing as absolute truth. We believe that. Uh, it's not that I get to determine this. God has decided what is good and evil, what is right and wrong. Another lie we want to identify is the YOLO lie. Oh, uh, the YOLO you lie. You only live once. And right. I think you and I talked about this, that a lot of times uh, YOLO is thrown out there as really as an excuse uh, to do maybe do whatever I want. Maybe huh? it's live recklessly. Maybe it's treat people however I want or pursue whatever I might want. Or maybe just live um, our, our lives in a way of no fear of consequence or anything like this. The Bible teaches the exact opposite. Uh, a verse in Ecclesiastes 12:14 says, God will judge us for everything we do, including every secret thing, whether good or bad. And Paul echo echoes this a few times too, uh -huh. that all of us at the end of our lives will actually stand before our creator and give account for our lives. He says, good or bad. So uh, YOLO is actually not true. Uh, we, of course, we believe in eternal life and, and all of this to be true. And we would certainly want to push back uh, against this life ne and culture. And yeah, and the, co the, whole, the whole YOLO thing kind of makes you feel like that that uh, the next life doesn't matter, sure. right? When clearly, you know, what happens here impacts the Our world that matter. is to come. Yeah, it matters, right? Mm -hmm. All right, this fourth one could get us in a little bit of trouble, right? Yeah, come on. 
Now, just to be right up front, I think Taylor Swift is awesome. She writes beautiful songs. Some have called her the Shakespeare of our age. I never have, but yeah. But some people have. And so she writes really great stuff. But lately, she's been singing this thing about karma. Yeah. Like that it's a thing, right? And I just we want to push back on that lie. It gives this idea that basically what comes around goes around. Mm-hmm. If you do something bad, you're going to get whacked back in this life. Yeah. And that sort of thing is the way we think. And yet the Bible says that this isn't the way that it is. And it's God's good grace and mercy that causes it not to be. In yeah. fact, in the book of Matthew, Jesus said, God causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. He sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. In other words, God sends the love of the sun every morning and rain uh, to take care of our crops and to make the world alive for good people and for people that don't always do good. And, of course, none of us are perfect. We always make mistakes. The thing I've been noticing about Taylor's lyrics is that the karma that's bad karma always goes to other people. Yeah. And she always kind of expects to get the good karma. Yeah, sure. Right? But if it's really how it worked, I mean, we all make a lot of mistakes and we would all kind of get it. What I'm afraid it does to our kids is it makes them really judgy. Sure. I mean, our world is full of enough judgment as it is, mm-hmm. right? And if you're always looking for karma to whack the person who did wrong to you, it feels like you kind of work your whole life in a position where you're pretty self-righteous and you're always hoping the other person gets it or God strikes them for what they did to you. Yeah. Right? And what we're saying here, too, I think would really push it back against the, the revenge idea, too. Oh, right? yeah. She's got a song sure. about this, too. Oh, does uh, she? Yeah, she that sure revenge does. song. Uh, and I think we see it in, like, every movie ever, uh, this idea of vengeance and revenge, but this is not the Jesus way, and we would certainly want to lead and teach our kids differently. The fifth and final lie, you said we could list 100, uh, five today that we have today is that science and or technology will save us. Oh, yeah. Uh, sure. Maybe that science and or technology has all the answers. We've seen it rapidly evolve and progress over the last decade or so. I've been blown away by what AI has become <laughs> right? in the last even 12 months. Um, and I, we would certainly want our kids to know that all our trust, faith, and hope is not simply found in, in technology or, or science. Uh, the Bible says, I love what it says in Psalm 27, it says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we trust in the name of the Lord our God. This is, this is faith. This is what we put our faith in. Uh, technology and science, they're, they're not inherently evil. Right. And they can certainly be helpful and beneficial in, in a whole lot of ways. Uh, but it's not where we put all our faith as followers of Jesus. That's in the Lord. Yeah, it's this important idea that like science and faith aren't necessarily in opposition to each other. Right. Yeah. As Christians, we believe science is fantastic yep. and we should pursue it. Mm-hmm. But we also don't like look to science as the savior of the world or yep. that technology is going to get us there. I remember when the first iPhone came out. Yep. We're, we're on number like, what, 16, 17, Something whatever like it is, right? Yeah. And everybody was like, oh, the first iPhone. I mean, it was great. Yeah. But we're now aware that it's brought good things and the scrolling and some of the social media stuff is bought bad too. too yeah. yeah. So like science and tech aren't either necessarily good or bad, right. but they're certainly not our saviors. We need a God who's bigger and that cares about matters of the heart. For sure. Right. All right. Well, these are five ideas, five lies that are kind of in the culture that we fight back against because yeah. we want our kids to have the best life. Right. And that's what we're aiming for. So hopefully as a parent, you can see all this and this. Yesterday, I fought, forgot to mention, but I wanted to say this, that the Bible is so clear that greater is he who is in you, meaning God, the Holy Spirit in our lives, than the one that's in the world. Amen. And though we're talking about the devil and his lies and those things, and they're real, but when you remember that God is greater. And today, I hope yeah. you'll remember that as you go do whatever you do and as you love on your kids. Have a great day. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow, guys.